Good afternoon and welcome to the Sanger House Health and Wellbeing Centre right here in the heart of Taunton in the beautiful southwest of the UK. My name is Warwick Lydiate and one of the things I do at the Sanger House is to teach the Enneagram. For anybody that um, doesn't know, those who don't know, um, this diagram here is the Enneagram. And the Enneagram means figure of nine. And you will see that uh, in this representation that there are nine numbered points uh, around a circle. And each of these represents a personality type. And gradually, over coming, the coming sessions, um, I shall be explaining more, delving into each individual type. For today's introductory session, we're going to just note the names of these types and notice that they're all arranged around a circle. The circle is representative of kind of everything, like a global image. It's all-encompassing, basically saying, we're all in there, we're all in this. But you'll see that there's an arrangement of lines uh, around the Enneagram too. What uh, the Enneagram is very anxious to avoid is putting anybody inside a box. That's the very last thing that this is about, because when we're discussing personality, the subject of personality, there's a huge amount of variation and flexibility. So you'll see that even round the edge, round the circle of the Enneagram, each type has particular neighbours next door. So this kind of movement around the edge, and movement and flexibility around the, the, along the lines of the Enneagram. We have, all of us have habits and patterns of thought and behaviour that sometimes can appear fairly inflexible. But there's a lot to each of us. Uh, we're, we're individuals as much as anything. Even though we have these, we get into these habits and patterns, we're individuals. And there's a lot of variety to explore in the Enneagram. Today, I'd just like you to note the names of each of the types and just have a think for a moment um, about each of the words. The reformer, type one, the reformer. I've already spoken of type, type one. Sometimes, you know, in Enneagram circles, we're, we're trying to move away from this image of type. These are kind of energies that we give out, that we uh, um, explore within ourselves and then project outwards. So if you think of the energy of the reformer, uh, at point two is the helper. Point three, the achiever. You can begin to sense that these are far from boxes to put anybody in. These are just little um, nuggets of information about this particular type, kind of energy. Just a little a small snapshot of what uh, goes into the, the character or the personality. So there's a point four, the romantic, sometimes called the individualist. Point five, the observer. Point six, the loyal sceptic. Let's conjure up those words in your mind for a moment. What does that say to you? Point seven, the adventurer. Point eight, the asserter. And nine, the peacemaker. Those are the personality types, uh, the personality energies that the Enneagram explores. And as well as exploring characteristics and the habits and patterns, the Enneagram is very clever, as we shall see, because it explores motives. What drives these things? What drives these instinctual patterns within us? I'd like to say at this stage a little bit about the who 
of the Enneagram, but frankly, there isn't a huge amount to say. Um, the symbol of the Enneagram is very old. This system of triangles, you'll see there's a, a kind of equilateral triangle at points three, six, and nine, linking those types. And each side of that are um, other triangles. The mathematicians among you will know what those are. Not quite triangles because there's a curved bit at the end. But one, two, and four in their, in their, um, have their particular triangle, five, seven, and eight. And together, this makes up the Enneagram as a whole. Uh, this, this, the origin of the symbol is actually unknown, but it's believed to be very ancient. Possibly um, ancient Sufi, possibly Desert Fathers, but uh, a lot of mystery about that. Um, it was put together in this format by an extraordinary person called George Gurdjieff, who was an Armenian mystic. And around the um, beginning of the uh, 20th century, he came across the symbol and began to see the patterns. Uh, he was an explorer, he travelled widely, and uh, he began to put the patterns and habits together in this form. And then later psychologists, uh, following on from Gurdjieff, uh, Oscar Icazo from uh, Bolivia and Claudio Naranjo of Chile, uh, they were psychologists uh, who began to explore this further and, and really uh, cement the Enneagram as we know it today. So it has an, an ancient heritage and it's also something uh, quite a lot more modern. And that's really all that can be said very much about the history of the, the Enneagram. We can say a little bit more about why. Why study the Enneagram? The historian Yuval Noah Harari says that um, in a world where AI and algorithms get to know us and they know all about us uh, and they, they seem to be able to tell what we're thinking, certainly what we're reading, what we're watching. Uh, Harari says it's important to know ourselves better than the AI, better than the algorithms. If not, they may sell us things that we don't want. They may nudge us in directions we may not want to go because they get to know us so well. So he stresses the importance of knowing ourselves. This is why um, these kinds of things are very important to help us know ourselves. And then one of my favorite quotes, the um, wonderful old Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh, who sadly died last year, he said this, before you fall in love with someone, learn to walk on snow without leaving any footprints. Now, whether you fall in love with somebody or not is not really the point. It's learning in our relationships and interactions not to walk with hobnail boots into people's lives and onto people's lives to walk with a gentleness and a sensitivity, with a real eye for compassion. The Enneagram has um, a number of important uses. It um, has a, an enormous use in business. Increasingly, it's becoming very important in the business world, where um, managers, bosses can learn to harness the skills of their employers and put them into the places that suit them best, um, where they're going to thrive as well as produce their best work. Um, so it's very important that, uh, that we kind of know ourselves and that those people know us and know their workforces to get the very best out of us. So there's a range of reasons why we need to, uh, why it's important to study the Enneagram. A couple more quotes about the how. How do we go about studying 
the whole subject of personality, not just the Enneagram, but personality as a whole. John Peterson, the, um, the uh, psychologist and uh, lecturer on psychology, he, uh, he has, uh, a, does a course on the psychology of personality. And he says, I want you to approach the course as an engineer of the human spirit. I just love that phrase. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Not the engineer who comes in with a hammer, a sledgehammer and, and bashes things about, but one who knows the engine and knows how to get the best out of it. We're engineers and, and we want to, to live in, a, in an oiled way, like a, a, a well-functioning um, engine. Living the, the best life we can be, being the very best human beings that we can be. And then um, Enneagram teachers often talk about approaching the Enneagram with the three C's. The first is curiosity, not indifference. We don't want to say, oh, I'm not interested in that. Uh, we should be. I recommend that we are interested in personality, our own and others, to enjoy our relationships, to be encouragers, be people who are perhaps good listeners or be better listeners, uh, getting the very best out of our friendships, our marriages and our, our workplaces. Come to this, come to the Enneagram, come to personality with a curiosity, thinking, oh, that's why I do this. Oh, that's why I do this funny little idiosyncrasy that uh, I, I do. Uh, the second C is compassion, not judgment. Come to the Enneagram with an enormous sense of compassion for yourself and for others. I've said there are various uses, and I mentioned the business use of the Enneagram. Um, Hollywood as well, I understand, use it for characterisation uh, in, um, in the film world. One of the ways the Enneagram is actually catching on now in various places around the world is the Enneagram Prison Project, where there's teaching to uh, those, those in prison to have compassion, for each other and for themselves, for their own experiences, um, uh, as well as the experiences of uh, others. So we approach the Enneagram and personality with curiosity, with compassion, but also with a chuckle. We can have a little bit of a laugh at ourselves when we realise some of the things that we do and why we do them, the little habits that uh, maybe irritate ourselves sometimes and, and may certainly irritate others. We can learn to have a bit of a chuckle, a lightness about it. So, yeah, it is a serious study. It's important that we look at personality, but we can come to it with a certain lightness. Um, the other how that I really want to deal with today and I don't really want to go much beyond that in, in this kind of introductory session. There's much that we will learn to explore in the Enneagram and we'll have um, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of understanding as we delve into each of the types and the various possibilities that we have. But one of the things that Enneagram teachers do uh, really before we approach uh, anything to do with the Enneagram. Each time we meet uh, Enneagram forums and, um, and, and various meetings, we, we do something called an attention practice. Um, it's almost a meditation, but um, for us it's, it kind of sounds a bit grand to call it a meditation. What we do is really we just feel the ground beneath our feet. We pause, we stop, and we breathe, and we feel the breath. The diagram has uh, knows three different centers of energy within the body. 
um, there's, there's the gut or the, the stomach or the belly, that the, the, the energy of the body. There's the energy of the heart and the energy of the head. And the Enneagram is divided into these three areas. The eight, nine and one is particularly associated with the body. Of course we have all three, but as we will see, there are a particular emphasis in, uh, in, these, in these ways that I'm going to explain. The 891 really centers, the center of energy is the body or the gut. The 2, 3 and 4, the center of energy is the heart. It's about connecting with others. The 5, 6 and 7 is the energy of the head. It's about the thinking processes. So I want to invite you just um, to pause for a moment and breathe in. And I will explain to you a little bit how this works, but just close your eyes, feel the ground under you and begin to breathe. Be conscious and aware of your breath. And if you first of all breathe into the stomach, breathe into the body, I like to think of these areas in terms of heat. This is the centre of heat, the energy of heat. The eight, nine and one have the energy of doing, of action, often very concerned about matters of justice, uh, very caring and uh, getting things done. It's a deep motivation for these types and the energy comes from the gut the gut reaction. Things need to be done now. So breathe into that. Feel that, um, uh, that heat energy. And then if you will, breathe in maybe a little more sh shallowly into the heart area. Be aware of the heart, the energy of the two, three and four. And this is a little less heat. This is warmth the warmth of compassion, the warmth of love, the warmth of connection. Feel that, feel those, uh, experience those emotions as you breathe into that area. And then finally, if you can imagine it, breathe into the headspace. This is the energy of thought. It's cooler. It's about clarity. It's searching, questing, pausing, waiting. We have all three of these areas. And it's important we learn to try and make use of all of them because in our types, we tend to focus on one or the other and we get fixated in those. But if we can realise at this stage, we have all three of these energies at our disposal and begin to breathe into them and feel them, we will be on our way to exploring the Enneagram. Many thanks for your time today. I look forward to exploring this more fully in sessions to come.